Okay. I'd like to call our beer parish council meeting order for Wednesday, May 25th, 2016. Official time is 7:13. Mr. Olivia, would you please lead us in a prayer? Mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. We meet here today to serve our community, to use our resources wisely and well, to represent all members of our community fairly, to make decisions that promote a common good. We recognize our responsibility to the past and to the future and all the rights and needs of both individuals and community. As trusted servants, we seek blessing on our deliberations and on our efforts here today. May we act wisely and well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Mr. Richard, would you lead us in a place, please, sir? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, please do the roll call. Tommy Collins. Here. Jane Davis. Here. Tommy Landry. Here. Lloyd Brown. Here. Warren Gossesay. Here. Natalie, Natalie Broussard. Here. Paul Landry. Here. Ricky Gosselin. Here. 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 Brian Napier. Here. Mary Francis. Here. Marty Traha. Here. Chad Mosman. Here. Roll call complete. We do have a quorum. We'll proceed to approval of minutes. <coughs> motion, please. Move. Hold on, hold on. Moved by Mr. Uh, Olive, <laughs> second by Mr. Duga. Approval of minutes, regular meeting, April 13, 2016, published May 10, 2016. Re regular meeting of April 27, 2016, published May 18, 2016. Roll call. And motion carries. Thank you. Not oh, for the record, Mr. Napier is not here. Thank you, Mr. Trahan. Person to address the council, item number one, Mr. Ray Freeman, Executive Director of Beer Parish Hurricane Levy and Conservation District to address the council to present the district's master plan. I want to thank you all all for allowing us to come here tonight. Um, Mike Pugh, our engineer, is going to give a presentation to you on our plan. And um, uh, before we start, I just want to say that uh, we, we are always open for questions or comments. Um, you all should have my contact information. If you don't, it's in the book. Our <coughs> friend and them have it. Um, and uh, we, we want to know what you think about it. We want to know both positives and negatives. This is a draft plan. And we want to make sure that we get, that we do the best job we can for Iberia Parish. So, um, Mr. Mike Pugh. Thank you all again. Uh, like I said, I'm Mike Pugh with Royal Engineering. Before we get started in a presentation, I want to echo Ray's comments on that is a draft. Um, so in terms of the tense of this plan, it's the culmination of roughly four years worth of work, uh, a pretty intense effort over the past year. And it's really the beginning. So we started this process a month ago, and we presented to the Port of Iberia. We're here to present to you guys. The plan is for us to present this plan to every town from Delcom to Generet, and in the fall hold a series of public meetings in all the communities throughout the parish to vet this plan. Um, there's already changes we know we want to make to it. So again, I, I'm pressed upon you as a draft. All comments are welcome. Uh, we're going to have a very formal comment period where every single person who makes a comment, it'll be recorded, it'll be identified how we address that comment in the plan. and this thing needs to become final towards the end of the year and then move forward to implementation. And this document that you have in front of you um, is sort of the cliff notes. There's a companion document to this that's roughly about six inches thick that has all the engineering and analysis that goes into it. And my name's on the back of this with my contact info. And if anybody wants to sit through, I will go through every page in that document and ask you every question. Um, call me, email me, Ray and I will sit with you at any point in time. And go to the next slide, Ray. Actually go to. <clears throat> so a little bit about the levee district. Um, and most of you probably know this. The genesis of this levee district was after Hurricane Rita. The parish council actually formed an advisory committee to look into 
how to better protect Iberia Parish from the event of a hurricane and flooding. Um, that advisory committee met for some time and the recommendation and ultimately the forming of the levy commission happened in 2010. Um, it's not just the levy board, it's actually a hurricane and conservation district. So by the fact, it becomes the steward of both coastal protection and restoration uh, within the parish. And it's comprised of appointees from parish council, all towns from Generate, Lowerville, Delcom, City of New Iberia, and the ports. Next slide. This is a little bit about the parish itself. I was born and raised here, and then some of these figures, when we started to pull them and look at them, actually surprised me. Um, you go to the next slide, right? Um, okay, click again. So population, and click again, and it talks about demographics. I was surprised compared to most, compared to all coastal parishes within Louisiana and throughout the South, Iberia Parish is actually a very young parish in terms of its population. Um, and like I said, we've been doing this for four years, and there's a lot of naysayers, particularly in my family, and sometimes it, it jumps at me that you have to convince the very people you're willing to protect that they're worth protecting. Um, and I think that's a challenge that's gonna stay in front of us the entire time. Can you go to the next slide? <coughs> One more. All right, the purpose of this plan. The purpose of this plan is to identify from a holistic standpoint how to best protect and restore our coast. Um, a lot of figures are being thrown out there. I don't know if y'all follow it. It's sort of my business to follow it. But we are losing our coastline in Louisiana at a very alarming rate. And you hear a term that's used a lot um, if you go to CPRI meetings or you listen to some of the versions of called relative sea level rise. It's not just that the coastline is eroding. Our land is sinking. Uh, Iberia Parish, we have uh, some of the lowest subsidence rates within the state, but from an erosion standpoint, we're right up there with the rest of them. Um, 1,800 miles of coastline lost the last 70 years, and it's only getting worse. So something has to be done. You go to the next slide, right? You want more? This is a, a, a graph that depicts under what's called a moderate scenario <clears throat> versus less optimistic. And let me explain that. So when you factor in modeling of storms over a 50-year period, you fact in t uh, sea level rise, land subsidence, and you run sometimes as many as 100 design storms. And we did this for Iberia Parish. And it comes up with data. And this is an economic model. And we work with CPRA in pulling this data. This is a graph that depicts, with this system in place or without it, total economic damage to this parish. And you can see, even in a moderate scenario, you're talking about $4 billion of reduction in economic damage from a 100-year storm. And a 100-year storm is, Katrina was a 500-year five storm, so was Rita. A 100-year storm is um, a lot less than that. And you're talking, if, you, if I ran a 500-year storm, the numbers would be almost double. You go to the next slide, Ray. This is a graph. It's hard to sometimes put into words, and I'm an engineer, so I take responsibility for this. We get twisted up with the numbers of a 1% chance storm or a 100-year storm. So if you put into, what people can, everybody has a 30-year mortgage. So if you put into a 30-year mortgage life cycle, your chances of flooding if you live in the coastal zone, you have a 26% chance of your house getting flooded over a 30-year life cycle of your mortgage if you live in the coastal zone without protection. I think it's a number that pretty much jumps out at me. You go to the next one. This is a graph that shows, uh, and we're gonna get into the cost of the system later, but for a $500 million investment, you get a $4.4 .4 billion savings. It's pretty significant. Um, one more. And this is, this is Port of Iberia. If this system in place or not in place, in the event of a 100-year storm, you're talking about six foot of flooding reduction at the Port of Iberia. That's the difference between the port basically being shuttered for four months to some minor yard flooding and then being back in action in two weeks. Go ahead, next one. Okay, a little bit about the system. Um, it's not just the levy. It's protection, restoration, and water management. Next slide. <clears throat> it's three parts working in one. So from a risk perspective, you have a hurricane that comes and it drives up storm surge. There you have levees and floodgates that stop that. Well, the restoration component of it is the levee is just all that, it's not all you need. You need to restore the marsh, you need to restore the wetlands, basically, which reduces the amount of runup that it's gonna hit against the levee. 
But the flip side is, is the internal drainage. And part of this plan addresses that significantly. Um, you go to the next one. Uh, the plan includes uh, six very sizable pumping stations. And just to give you a graphic to understand, one of the smaller ones is an 1,800 cubic feet per second pump station. There's 72 bathtubs every second. Um, a worst case scenario from an internal drainage flooding system is a slow moving category run. And the system is designed to be what's called a leaky system. All the existing channels, every drainage ditch will be able to flow under normal circumstances. It only become a closed system in the event of a storm. Um, so in the event of a, a slow moving category one with a southeast wind blowing for four days before it hits. And to give you an example of how this hits home, back in November, we had about a three or four inch rain in Koto. And it was preceded by a five day southeast wind. The tide was up probably two to three feet below, above average, so you had a head on the system. They got three inches of rain in Koto, which sits about 25 feet above sea level. And a woman got four foot of water in her house. She came to Lever District to tell us about it. What's going on there is you have all of these bayous and all of these conduits that are sea levels rising, our land subsiding, the tide's high, so there's a head on the system. So when it rains in Koto, if you got water stacked up against it, that water can't get out. Um, so having an internal drainage system and a pumping system, in the event we have to close this system, and you close it on a head, which means a high tide and water acting against the system, and you get 12 inches of rain, if you didn't have pumping, you would just flood the parish. And you might not even need the protection because the storm surge might not get high enough that it would have flooded, but you flood them without even knowing it. So um, there has been some questions about is there pumping, is there not pumping? Most definitely there's pumping in the system. You go to the next one, right? One more. <coughs> this is a graphic that you to understand how high the levee is. And I've been asked this question a hundred times. How high is it? So as engineers, we set the, the top of the levee at a, a certain elevation above sea level. Most people don't understand what that means. It doesn't mean anything to them. So from a height perspective, the Mississippi River levee is roughly about 23 feet above the ground. This levee is going to range between 11 and 15 foot. One more. Next one. And this is a graphic that shows, so from Delcom to Generet, the land in the parish gradually rises. And the worst design storm with this parish is the storm coming from the southeast, and all the water piles into Weeks Bay. So your highest storm surge from an event is going to be on the west side of the parish. So the levee itself on the east side of the parish is actually, you can see, it's not going to be as high as the west side. And as a relation to the ground, it's even shorter. So when it's built, the levee in general, it's going to look a lot shorter than the levee in Delcom, but it's because of those factors. One more. OK, cost. How much is this going to cost? You can go one more. One more. It's going to cost a lot of money, but it's, it's a unique time. If you had asked me 15 years ago if this was possible, to put $500 million worth of flood protection in, I'd have said it's not possible. But we find ourselves in a position where our state has got a dedicated revenue stream that's going to, when you cobble it together, it's going to be roughly a billion and a half dollars a year the next 15 years, and they can only spend it on one thing, what this plan is for. And it only can be spent in, in the coastal zone of Louisiana. And $15 billion <coughs> worth of the state's plan, the Corps of Engineers took, took care of it after Hurricane Katrina. So it's a very unique position we find ourselves in and the state is dying for local governments and levy districts that have a plan that have good leadership that have matching funds to come to them with their project with dollars in hand committed to doing this work they have a hundred million dollars sitting in the basically the bank account right now dedicated for matching funds and nobody's coming to them to get these matching funds so if you wait too long those matching funds will be gone but it's a unique opportunity to leverage a dollar um, four to one five to one in some cases and one thing that the state is bound by, and it's actually uh, constitutional, constitutionally bound, is they can only spend, whether it's their BP dollars, which is restore dollars, their GOMESA dollars, or trust fund dollars, they can only spend it on coastal protection and restoration. So it's a protected funding source. Go ahead, next one, right? One more. So this is a spread of the cost. You can obviously see most of it's going to be in construction. Um, a big portion of this cost is in, you can see in the yellow, is operation and maintenance. One thing that we talked about as we were putting this plan together with the levy district is the importance of budgeting for operation and maintenance. 
And this number is actually O&M over a 50-year life cycle for the entire system. So it's a very conservative amount, um, but it allows the, the levy districts to operate the system once it's built and maintain it. Uh, one of the worst things you can do is build an elaborate flood protection system and not maintain it. Um, St. Bernard Parish, which we do a lot of work in, has one of the best flood protection systems in the world. The Corps of Engineers built it from without any cost share, turned it over to them. They don't have the money to operate it, they don't have the know-how to operate it, and they can't pass a tax to generate the money to operate it. So they're sitting there with a state-of-the-art flood protection system that's rusting away right now, and there's nothing they can do about it. So there's no way that anybody should move forward with any of these plans without having a dedicated funding stream to operate and maintain the system. Um, and that's something the district has committed to since day one. You want more? This is a graphic, uh, and we worked with FEMA on developing some of these numbers of, and it's a projection, right? Um, it's, <clears throat> it's a cost of flood insurance in the coastal zone as you sit relative to base flood elevation. Um, with this system in place, every house within the parish will, will be above the base flood elevation. Right now, there's a lot of structures in the parish that sit below the base flood elevation, and flood insurance is only going up. Even at one foot below, which next time FEMA updates their flood mats, a lot of structures in the parish will be below that. $5,600 a year in flood insurance, most people can't afford that. And I don't know anybody who can afford $25,000 a year in flood insurance. It becomes almost unaffordable at some point in time. So when you compare it against what you may have to pay in a tax or some locally generated fund, what you save, the tax is probably gonna cost you 50% less of what your flood insurance is gonna cost you. And that's not even factoring in I, I lived in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. I got 12 foot of water in my house. I had the max flood insurance. They didn't even scratch it. So I'd much rather pay more and not flood than have flood insurance that's very expensive and you collect it and you can't even fix what got flooded. Go to the next one. This is a schematic of, of the entire system. It's a series of levees, pumping stations, drainage structures, navigation gates. Uh, we've been working closely with the Port of Iberia to make sure that the gate the width of the gate and the metrics of the gate meet what they're working on in the AGMAT program, and we've accomplished that. Um, I've got details, more than you can shake a stick at. This is all we really could fit in this plan, so if you want more details, I'd be happy to come sit with you and, and show you every detail of every reach. Next one, Ray. Another question I've gotten is how long this is going to take? Well, we talked about the funding stream that's in place right now at the state and uh, the willingness of the state to move forward with it, and you go one more. <clears throat> One more. So it's a pretty unique time. Um, we have, and, and we had it up in the levy district's office, Ray, I don't even know if it's still up there. We had the entire wall of that conference room full with schedules. So we have this whole thing resource loaded into a schedule, um, and it condensed down to a 15-year life cycle. So with the funding that's in place from the state and our knowledge of what it takes to get this type of flood protection in, 15 years is very doable. Think about it this way. In New Orleans, we put 15 billion in seven years in the ground. And this is a much less complicated system in a much less densely populated area. Most of the system has gone through, you know, the interface of Marsh and Cane Land where there's no houses anywhere near. So this is, 15 years is very doable. One more, right? Next steps. Um, I talked about uh, the need to do the public outreach in the fall. Uh, we've been working closely with CPRA. There's already, CPRA has already committed a couple million dollars of funding already for one of the structures within the system and it's currently under design. Um, the plan's been completed. Um, once we vet this thing and it becomes final, um, the clock starts ticking. Um, it's a matter of, of figuring out as a parish what are we going to do in terms of how we're going to put our money up and then partnering with the state and moving this thing forward. The state's even committed, not in writing obviously, but because of this plan, because of the leadership, and because of what's going on in this parish, that they're going to pick some projects from this plan and just complete it for us. And that's not out of words. There's some projects that you won't even have a match on. None of the Go Mesa dollars and none of the Restore dollars require a match. A match is encouraged. So, for instance, there's a $600 million project going on in Terrible in Parish right now, and there's no match. States just figured it was a need, it was in their plan, and they're accomplishing it. Um, they, they're, they're interested in picking some of these projects already and moving forward without a match. So it's a pretty big commitment on their behalf. And the CPRA is at every levy district meeting and has been in every working session. So 
between the levy district and CPRA is a very good working relationship, and they have the goal. They have all the money. Um, part, of the, part of the funding analysis we have in that thicker document looks to some federal dollars, some water dollars, possibly some hazard mitigation dollars, but it's a, such a small percentage of what we're actually targeting. 80% um, of it, 70% of it's coming from the state. One more, right? All right, that's it. Um, you have, like I said, you have all the contact information. I'd be happy to sit with you, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Mike Pugh? Mr. Trial? Yes. I'll, sh I'll share that $524 million. What we we have to come up with a local share? Like I said, the dollars we're attacking don't require a match, but programmed in the funding analysis is somewhere between 60 and $80 million locally. And if you run that over, what a what a tax would look like with a bondable instrument. Um, that, and that's spread out over 50 years, right? So you're not talking about coming up with that money today. So you're looking at probably somewhere a, a four to six re one return on your money. So it's investing $80 million to get $500 million. I'm an engineer. I'm also a businessman. That's a pretty good deal. Not inclusive of gold mason. You still have the floor, Mr. Trahan. Yes. I'd like to suggest to the hmm. levy board, and would y'all please stand the ones that are representing the levy board here tonight? I would like to get together a citizens committee to look at a funding source, not for this year, next year, you know, but start it and to where they can look at a local funding source through our millages, attacks, whatever they would come up with. It's something we wouldn't have to do, but the public would do and get behind it. So, I would, I, Mr. President, I'd, I'd like to see to put a citizens committee together. And okay. No, it, 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 I, it's I, part, I, you run in the parish. Mm -hmm. I, I want y'all and, and them to marry together and come up with a plan that maybe we can live with to have a dedicated funding source to run this levy. And we have some data. It's NLT. actually not, it's not in this presentation of uh, Lafouche and Terrebonne are two of the model levy districts in terms of they have dedicated taxes in place and have for some time. And we have numbers that shows local taxes generated over a 15-year period because Terrebonne's actually been 15 years. And dollars of infrastructure put in place through matching dollars. In some cases, it's 15 to 1, the return on, them, on their local money. <coughs> And I'd like, I'd like to get together and see about putting that committee together of citizens from the, uh, from the parish, from different entities and, and everything. I'll certainly work in any way I can. Thank you. Yeah, I, Mr. Francis, you finished? Yeah. Mr. No, Francis? I just, the only question I was wondering was like with the, uh, the federal part with the match, y'all not able to try to do like the incline? In kind? Yeah. What do, I mean, I in, in kind like with, with, I guess it'll go kind of like with the amount of employees it'll take with the project where you could kind of show we we'll give back labor, isn't that how that kind of in, in kind is, can be included in a match, but typically would be, in, an example would be if you decided to build a section of this levy with parish workforce. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be okay. in kind. <coughs> I, I highly don't recommend that. Um, but well, in kind, when I see yeah, I mean, that's, 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 of it, instead of the match, you know, maybe trying to show where, you know, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's ways you can do in-kind services, absolutely. Right, okay. Mr. Landry? Yeah, I'd like to know, it, what's your, the economic impact to the parish as it relates to construction of the project? The, have y'all got any figures? No, but in the next steps, a okay. uh, one, one, couple of things we're working on with Ray right now is uh, there needs to be a regional-wide hydraulic model, model done. So we have the storm surge model. We have what it looks like when a hurricane runs up and runs water against the levee, but the companion is what if you get a 12-inch rain on the backside? And it looks like CPRA is going to go ahead and fit the bill for that. I don't have a commitment yet, but they're moving towards that. That would be step one. But another thing Ray and I were talking about is, is getting an economic study done that would look like, like what you said, what, what is the, the economic benefit from this being done within this parish? And then to go a step further, if this thing's in place, how does it affect real estate values, the real estate market, people moving in, businesses moving in, and sales tax, and run those numbers out over 50 years and see if at some point in time, this thing being in place, you may generate enough money off additional sales tax and real estate tax that it almost pays for itself. Another question too is, uh, 
the impact of our roads as it relates to when that construction would begin because I have a camp down in, in Terrebonne and it's it's unbelievable what those trucks are doing to the to the roadways and I don't know if y'all have taken that into well, consideration or not, but that's the, just one. Almost all of the construction that's going to happen here is designed to be what's called in-place borrow. In other words, you dig the borrow canal right next to where you're building the levee, so you, the impact on the roads is going to be almost none on a project like this. Any other questions for Mr. Pugh? Thank you, Mr. Pugh, and I, I'm sure if y'all need some other information, Mike or Ray is available. Uh, just keep us up to date on the progress on the PR campaign and, you know, what the council's efforts has to be to, to get the information to our constituents to have them a, a decision on how they want to move forward with this project. Thank y'all. Thank you. And thanks for all the levy board members that are here tonight. Moving along, reports and finance administrative action. There is none. Reports, parish and other governmental agencies, reports by project engineers, and various ongoing projects, including grant funding projects, all in accordance with resolution 2013-49. That was mailed to each and every one of y'all. Public works report, public works department report for closed orders, works dated May 2nd to May 6, 2016, was also mailed in the packet. Special business, resolution number 2016-88 was vetoed by Parish President Larry Reshort on May 2nd, 2016. Veto statement was attached, was published in the official journal, uh, journal May 10th, 2016. Item number two, need a motion? Move. Move by Mr. Landry, second by second. Mr. Paul Landry. Consider a veto override resolution of 2016-88, which resolution authorized the execution of an agreement between Iberia Parish Government and Mr. Brandon B. Avenue regarding a problematic encroachment on Lot 79 in Sugarland Subdivision on his property, 316 Sugarland Trace, located in District 8, as requested by Ricky Gonsalan. Need a motion? They already did. Oh, did. Okay. Discussion? I'll take the floor into my motion. Um, as everyone, it's been some time now since this resolution was uh, voted on. Uh, we did pass it in full council to authorize uh, a reduction in easement, and Parish President felt that uh, he needed to veto this to be consistent with other issues. I'm bringing it back up for reconsideration because I think Mr. B. Avenue uh, did, was a missing, mis miscommunication mm -hmm. because he did not encroach on the easement. He's asking to encroach on the easement. It's a total of six foot eight inches by 22 feet, not much at all. Uh, I think as elected officials, um, encroachment on easements need to be done on a case by case basis. I think he was fair enough to come to this council and present his argument. I think plan and zoning did as well, and I feel that we ought to grant this easement reduction to let him proceed. We all complaining about young families moving into this parish. This is a young family with a growing business. I think we ought to cater to his needs and, and allow him to uh, encroach that small amount on the easement. Mr. Gossam? Mr. Sheely, where are we with the, the law on easement reductions and right of way? I hope you all have one for consideration in July. July? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gossam. Mr. Landry? Uh, Paul Landry? I, I pretty much feel the same way, you know, Ricky does. And uh, I. I I guess kind of what bothers me is we're going to be looking at uh, 351 later, the uh, Paul Segura uh, Memorial. And, you know, we had a road built in the wrong place. And we're spending thousands of dollars, you know, uh, trying to get that resolved and everything. It, it just seemed like we're working that, that one. And I, I'm all for it, you know, and I, I want that one to be corrected. But we got this young guy here that, that you know, wants to build a house and everything, and, and I, I just think if we're going to spend that much time on Paul Segura, and I see Larry, le uh, Andy leaning up, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I just I feel strongly about it. Okay. And that's <coughs> Mr. Mr. Landry and Mr. C. I, I'd just like you to, to, to look at it and read the, uh, the verbiage again. A problematic encroachment. Okay, that kind of it says what it is. No, it, it was considered problematic, but is it, it that's a determination, that's an opinion only. Oh, okay. Mr. Uh, Seeley? <laughs> <laughs> Since the uh, Paul Segura Parkway uh, uh, comment was directed to me, I guess the first thing I'd like to know is how much money have we spent on Paul Segura Parkway correcting that problem? Um, the day we were meeting, going over the millages, I asked you if we must have spent a couple thousand on it, and you 
you, you said, yeah, we spent some money on it. No, I, I, I don't know. I, I've, spent, then, I've spent yeah. a ton of time on it, but you ain't got a bill for any of it, I can tell you that, nor will you because the DA's office provides you with free legal representation. I'm not going to get an inaugurate. Maybe we could have spent that on mobile homes. <laughs> okay. You finished, Mr. Lamb? Mr. Silly, you finished? Oh, yeah. Anyone else? Roll call. Wait. Oh, 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 oh. I said, asked if anyone else, Mr. Brown. <laughs> what are we voting? We're voting <laughs> on the override of veto that was vetoed by Mr. Richard no. on an encroachment on an easement. Yeah, okay, I just want okay, to I, I, I asked. You never raised your hand. I apologize if I didn't see it, but I didn't have I your name. No, no, I didn't raise it. Okay, roll call. That motion fails. Moving right along, <clears throat> council member announcement. Any council member announcements in this that would like to make any announcements currently? Rick, you just got to have 10. Oh, need, yeah. 10, need 10 to override a veto. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Last weekend on Saturday, I was able to attend the Hazard Household Waste Day, I guess we could say that. Mm -hmm. And I want to just compliment the administration. I thought it was a, a great turnout. I thought people uh, were... Uh, we're stationed well. Uh, I want to. Scott was out there. Mr. Reshord. Uh, what's, what's, the, what's her name? Cindy. Cindy. She did a great job with the chicken. The chicken was well. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. But I, I do want to say for a record, I did buy breakfast. But Mr. Reshord did buy lunch, so I think we're even. But no, I want to. Those are the type of things that I think uh, the people of this parish appreciate. Simple things like that that we're able to offer those type of services. I think next year will be even better. Some of the things y'all had discussed about actually. Uh, present it a little bit better, but y'all did a fine job, guys. I, I gotta say that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, any other council member announcements? <coughs> Hearing none, moving right along. Parish president announcements, Mr. V. Short and Warren. I want to thank you for coming out. I appreciate all the work you did over there. I know you sweat a little bit, but and you too, Tommy. It's hard to sit down, Mr. Richard. I know you did a great job, Warren. <laughs> and Tommy, thank you for coming out. J.E. Down. and everyone else that came. I appreciate it, all of you guys. Eugene. Um, announcements, uh, road, road repairs, we're doing some, well, we did road repairs on Bonnet Road and District 13, um, Pelche Road, uh, Delcom Road, and also in District 8, we did Michelle Lane. We have, um, we had some down trees, look like, in District 13 that day. We <coughs> took care of on Dubois, on uh, Dubois, Migas. Uh, we're doing slash busting slash busting the trees right now in district 13 we're doing some uh, field drainage work in district 10 and district 11 we're doing some um, roadside uh, 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 drainage with a ditch machine in district 10 and 12 and we're doing some regular roadside um, drainage in uh, district 10 11 5 and 8 so um, public works been been real busy and uh, I'm gonna more than likely when I do my uh, president's announcement, be talking about public works most of the time. Um, just so you know, when I come here and you can say, well, he's always talking about public works. I want to let you know where the equipment is, where the people are, uh, that most people see in Iberia Parish. Most people see public works department. So I just want to tell you what's going on with public works. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Mr. Richard. Mm -hmm. Public comments and ordinance on any resolution. Need a motion? Move. Moved by Mr. Brown. Second. Second by Mr. Gossian. Roll call. That motion carries. Is anyone here in the audience that would like to make any comments on any resolution that's on the agenda tonight? Please step up to the podium, state your name for the record, and the resolution or ordinance that you're addressing. Good evening. My name is Randy Gonsalin. I live at Ford Estate Drive. I'm going to read my comments, but I want to preface. Uh, I, I want to preface 4759 with some comments, positive comments to the council. For a minute, we'd be being consistent with three minutes. Three minutes, got my clock running. Use the five <laughs> seconds. Often send, often send the info based on various items, which just about all are related to taxes, funds being spent. In particular, my taxes. I hope everybody else comes speak for themselves, but that's my taxes. Often goes in one ear and out the other, but sometimes you get stuck in the middle, and that's when I say, "Yes, yeah, somebody heard me. Work on it, you know." But let's address some of the things that's happened here. <clears throat> Change in management style, same as a large entity with managers and board of directors. That's what's happening. 
the previous managing president had a different management style to where the directors of the council was inclined to manage the business including micromanaging expenditures. Often, often I, was I was baffled by the council authorizing dollars for like a $300,000 project which already had contingencies for the engineer and which already had contingencies for the contractor and oftentimes when num money, money was, or numbers were thrown out on the table, let's put another eighteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on it. If it was my company, I'd say three hundred. dollars see if they can do it for two eighty. dollars That's how I'd handle my business. We ain't got the money to give away anymore. <laughs> new style, new management, president, new directors, council members. Do as the charter allows and let the president run the business. Never have, I seen, never have I seen someone make recommendations on reducing expenditures. My wife had a Sunday school class. One of the members stepped up to the other night and said it was time that someone was looking at the budget, with someone else stating it was time. Mr. Gonsolin, I hate to impose on you, but I'm trying to cross-reference what are you discussing? Well, I'm, I'm yes, because you said 4759, that's the council okay. reduction. Yes, sir. All right, uh, the budget, just making reference to the budget, we did have someone look for the budget, at the budget before, Mr. Uh, Ricky Gonsolin, Mr. David Ditch, they were made finance chair and co-chair, and they were pulled off that, but they were looking at the numbers, and that was part of the job of running this business. Now we're getting down to it. Now, the council's action go to 14 to 11, from 14 members to 11 and 9. Hey, I'd like to see that happen, but we've been there, we've done that. It got botched. Recommendation from an ad hoc committee, which Mr. Andy Sheely, Mr. Patrick Norris and several others worked on it, had some great recommendations. Those recommendations got turned inside out, went to the voters, and the voters said, no way. My taxes, don't spend taxes on it any longer. It's been there, done that, we did it. It's over. Let's get to work. Now, let's move on. Let's address the issues we have and just work with what we have. There's going to be too much money and too much time spent on trying to restructure this organization, even trying to coordinate with the parish. Let's move on and let the man try and do his job. If he does something wrong, we've got an attorney, we've got an attorney general to address. But he is the first one I've seen say, hey, let's try and save some of those taxpayers' dollars without having to increase taxes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience would like to address <coughs> the council on any resolution or ordinance that's on this agenda tonight? Please step up to the podium and state your name. Seeing none, would that be? In, I need a motion to go out upon a motion by Mr. Brown, second by Ms. Broussard. Roll call. That motion carries. <coughs> Ordinance introduced for public hearing and adoption. Summary number 4759, introduced by Paul G. Landry, District 7. An ordinance proposing an amendment to Article 2, Section 2-01A of Iberia Parish Home Rule Charter entitled Compensation, Qualification, and Elections to revise the current section allowing that the legislative power of the parish government shall be vested in a council consisting of 11 members elected for four-year terms with one of the elected from and by the qualified electors of each district commencing with the gubernatorial, local, and municipal fall 2016 elections. Move. Moved by Mr. Landry. Second. Second by Mr. Gashasan. No, Discussion. Mr. Landry, Paul. I've uh, talked with Mr. Eugene today. We're both going to just say a few words and uh, we're going to move on with it. <laughs> still, the number here that we have is still from the year 1984 when we left the police jury. Uh, Lafayette has a good functional moving business and they represent 25,000. I think we can, I think we could have did. I think nine was the better number, but I know a, a bunch of y'all felt that that was, you know, too much. So I, I did agree to go with that. In District 7, this is what they want. They want a reduction. And uh, in every business, we're having to do more with less. And with that, uh, I turn it over to Eugene. Mr. Olivier. Thank you, Paul. <coughs> as far as 14 is a good fit for Iberia Parish, every parish is different in the state. You know, different models fit different parishes. Uh, I'll quote Guy Cormier uh, of, of St. Martinville, for instance. I had a conversation with him about a month ago about council reduction. He said, Gene, he says, you know, nine works for us, but you got to do what's good for your parish. You got to look at your parish and make a decision what's the best for the people in your parish. I still feel in my heart that 14 is the best fit for Iberia Parish. 
The data supports it. I think the people's happy with the 14 uh, council representation, especially, especially in the rural areas of the parish. Uh, we, we need that. It's a lot of work in the rural areas. So I appreciate it. With y'all support, let's keep it at 14. Thank you. Any other okay. discussion? Mr. Brown? No. Mr. Brown, I don't want to miss you out. Oh, Mr. That's Brown. Okay. I, I, didn't, Mr. I, I didn't call for the vote. Yeah. I right, discussed that last meeting. Please don't vote till I call for the vote. Clear the board, Madam Chair. I asked you that last time. <laughs> now, roll call. Is that in the I'm a roll call. <laughs> that motion fails. I'm fine now. I'm fine. Okay. Moving right along, summary number 4760. An ordinance authorizing issuance of $5,500,000 aggregate pencil amount of revenue refunding bond series 2016 for the parish of Iberia, state of Louisiana, the issue of prescribing the form, terms, and conditions thereof and providing for the payment thereof, awarding such bonds to the purchaser thereof, providing for the redemption of certain outstanding bonds of the issuer, and providing for other matters in connection therewithin. No. Bond, bond Council has advised that the issuance amount needs to be amended to $5,360,000. <coughs> Move. Moved by Mr. Brown. Second. Second by Mr. Trahon. I'll yield to Mr. Jason Akers, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Akers with Foley and Udell uh, on behalf of the parish. And as your bond council with me is... David Medlin with Government Consultants, your financial advisor. Uh, thank you, first of all, for correcting the, the amount from the introduced version to the 5360 that's actually been sold. Following your direction uh, earlier, or I'm sorry, late last month, we have obtained the approval of the State Bond Commission to issue these bonds. Uh, with David's help, we approached the current bondholder uh, whose bonds are being refunded and another bank that expressed uh, some sincere interest in uh, being a part of this financing. We asked them to both uh, provide their best options for financing uh, yesterday morning. And with, after we've crunched the numbers, it looks like uh, we're going to be able to reduce the interest rate that you're paying now from 3.875% to 1.825%. So uh, that is something to be congratulated on. I'm going to yield to David for a second to let him tell you about the savings, and then I'll uh, address any, the, the ordinance itself. As Jason said, uh, we're refunding the 2008 bonds, and they had a rate of 3.875%. Uh, we requested, like you said, uh, regions to reset the rate rather than bid it, and they came back with 2.5% and produced a $217,000 savings. We felt we could do better than that. So we introduced some competition into the deal. Uh, Regions then uh, came back with a 2.32 rate, increasing savings to 242. And we challenged Chase Bank to uh, give you a very good proposal, and they did at 1.825% with a 346,000 uh, savings uh, comparing your current debt to your new debt. Uh, that's a very uh, aggressive bid. Uh, I think. The parish and the management of the parish should be recognized as being very proactive in your debt management, and as a result of this, your citizens will pay $346,000 less uh, over the next eight years, and you have that money to do other things. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Akers, that was made for Mr. Medlin, not uh, you. Uh, of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, all right. I'll, <laughs> yeah, uh, David provided something here, and what we do want to point out is that uh, the savings are kind of accelerated on this, so you receive the bulk of the savings, that 345000 he was talking about. The bulk comes in the next two years, 50000 in this current fiscal year you're in for your December 1 payment, and uh, eighty six, almost $90,000 next fiscal year. Uh, and those, since these are secured by excess revenues, those are actual dollar savings that you'll realize within your budget. Um, so. Uh, let me just back up to the ordinance real quick and explain again this is a refinancing of outstanding debt and just like when you refinance your home mortgage you're taking that old debt out that is at a higher interest rate you're putting new debt in at a lower interest rate and you're saving money as a result you're not going to have two different debts outstanding we're not extending the final maturity and and manipulating savings that way this is a savings purely as a result of the uh of the reduction in interest rate uh with your approval tonight we will move to close 
close on this transaction very quickly. We have a few things that we have to comply with that the purchaser has requested. Uh, we are confident that we'll be able to comply with those. Uh, we have closing documents that have to be executed. All of this kind of takes place outside of, of uh, not your concern, but certainly outside of your approval because all your approvals to, are given tonight. If you have any questions, whether you have them tonight or you have them out, uh, outside this meeting, we certainly want to address them for you. But if there's anything I can address now, we will. Mr. Gostin? It's a win-win for the parish, man. I mean, I know as bad as things are right now in the economy, this is a win-win for us. And I appreciate the administration and all of what you've done. Uh, I hope we get a unanimous second for this. This, this is a uh, this is win, and it's all to the raw. Appreciate that, Mr. Richard. M Mr. Right. Akers, um, does this in any kind of way possibly improve our bond rating moving forward by getting earn a better interest rate and saving the taxpayers some dollars? Certainly, anytime you have less of your revenues dedicated to the payment of uh, fixed expenses like debt service, it it's, it helps. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Akers? Roll call. Thank y'all, gentlemen, and, and I'll ask y'all to stay up there because we're going to make an adjustment to agenda. I'm going to move item uh, <coughs> summary number 110 up for uh, consideration right now, which was stated introduced by the parish president, a resolution to appropriate funding for the June 1st, 2016 payment of revenue bond series 2012 of the parish of Iberia, state of Louisiana, Cadena Fairgrounds, Cajun Riviera Resort Project. Can I have a motion, please? Move. Moved by Mr. Landry. Second. Se second by Mr. Davis. I'm going to uh, call on Mr. Akers to clarify uh, what a vote in favor this represents uh, on this issue. Yes, sir. Thank you again, Jason Akers with Foley and Udell. Um, I uh, am not speaking of, on, to advocate. I just wanted you to be aware of your legal responsibilities uh, with respect to the payment of debt service on bonds that were lawfully obligated and issued by the parish. Uh, pursuant to Title 39 of Louisiana Revised Statutes, if you <coughs> fail to make a debt service payment on bonds that were issued by the parish, you have an obligation to notify the Louisiana State Bond Commission of that failure. Mm -hmm. The Louisiana State Bond Commission then gives notice to the statewide elected officials, three of which meet in what is called a Fiscal Administrative Review Committee. They appoint a, at their election a fiscal administrator who comes in and takes over all day-to-day -day operational responsibilities of the parish. You, as elected officials, act only in an advisory capacity at that point. The fiscal administrator's responsibility and duty by both law and direction of the committee that oversees him is to, first of all, ensure that all debt obligations are paid because the view is that a failure of any one uh, political <coughs> subdivision within the state of Louisiana to pay its debt impacts all political subdivisions of the state of Louisiana. Therefore, the state has a vested interest in making sure that debts are, of its subdivisions are paid. And secondly, it has the right to determine who gets, uh, you know, what public works are completed, wh who gets hired for what jobs, et cetera, and et cetera. So just want you to be aware of that. And secondly, and also this is a, this is a corollary of the ordinance that you just approved, I mentioned that there's certain hurdles that have to be cleared. One of those is a certificate that will be given by uh, the council and by the administration that you're not in default under any outstanding obligations. And if you cannot give that certificate, then the savings that you just approved will go away because the, the, the lender, Chase Bank, who agreed to purchase these refunding bonds will not go through with the transaction if you're in default on, an, on another series of bonds. Right. So I do just want to make sure that that's ultimately clear. This is an obligation that you have to continue to appropriate the payments of debt service, whether you know, agreed to, uh, whether it's what you would have prioritized or otherwise. I'll be glad to answer any questions about what I just said, but I do I ask Mr. Gonsland if I can make this statement because it is very important. Any questions, Ms. Broussard? I just have one question. Will it also affect our ability to obtain future bonds if we default on this one? Most definitely. Most definitely. And, and we're lucky in Louisiana that I don't have a whole lot of anecdotal evidence to give you because this very rarely happens because of the state laws that are in place to prevent it from happening. Mr. Olivier? Jason, on this revenue bond for the Acadiana uh, 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 Fairgrounds, uh, could that be refinanced at any time at a lower rate possible? It certainly can. We will definitely take a look at it for you. Uh, Mr. Madeline, I'll be glad to look at that. Uh, that was issued in 2012, so typically there's about a five-year call provision that would be in effect. So we might be a, about a year away, but that doesn't mean we can't look at it and try to figure out a way to, uh, way to make it a, a more feasible debt service schedule for you or uh, you know, more palatable for you as you vote on it to obligate those funds okay, each year. Okay, I appreciate your work with the administration on that. Thank of you. course, we'll be glad to. Yeah. We already talked about it. Okay. Any, any other questions for Ms. Akers? 
Any clarification needed? Are we all good on that? Okay. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Seeley? Jason, uh, you know, I, I've worked with your firm for years and years, both in North Louisiana and South Louisiana. <clears throat> and routinely, part of what your firm does for Iberia Paris government and your clients is you always monitor past <clears throat> bond and indebtedness, looking for ones that are now ripe to take back to the market to refinance. That, I, I just that's wanted correct. to make sure that, that they understood that was, you, you were constantly doing that. That was part of the service that your firm provides to those local governments that it represents in that, bonding. Very much. <clears throat> no question for the question? Kim. Kim. Oh, Kim. Uh, thanks. Just to clarify, um, the actual resolution is reading to appropriate funding. The debt service payments were, and this was previously discussed in the three budget meetings that we had, the debt payments were actually budgeted for in the Acadiana Fairgrounds Fund. However, there is no transfer into the Acadiana Fairgrounds Fund from the parish's general fund or the royalty fund, you know, some undesignated revenue source to make those debt payments. So we are asking that we transfer funds from the general fund to cover that debt service payment that is due on June 1st. That debt service payment is actually $370,500. Okay, so we're asking to provide the funding from the general fund for this payment. Kim, Correct. where would that lead the general fund after this payment? Um, the general fund, fund balance should be approximately 800000 about 850000 so after um, that's the undesignated portion. Right. There is a reserve portion that still that's remains right. in the general fund as well. So the combined fund balance after that appropriation would be about a million three. Okay. All right. Thank you for the information. Ms. Bruce uh, Kim, I understand that the Katie and Fairgrounds Commission passed a resolution at their last meeting to transfer $70,000 from an account that they had to uh, contribute to this. Is, is that taken into consideration in here? My understanding of that $70,000 that was requested to be moved out is out of the construction fund. So there was a separate cash account that was established for the actual construction of the facility. So the bond proceeds went into that, uh, into that actual cash account and knowing that the construction costs were in excess of the bond proceeds, additional funds from other funds of parish government were transferred into that construction fund as well. So the balance that remains there belongs back to some other fund. Like, so all the bond proceeds would have been spent first. And so the funds that remain there belong back to the other funds that contributed in. So some of the funds that were contributed in, and I, you know, I mean, I wasn't here during the actual construction, so I don't know 100% of how much each of, each of the individual funds contributed in. General Fund kicked in some, the Economic Development District did, as well as the Public Buildings Fund, um, probably royalty as well. So we have to figure out exactly where those funds belong back to. So if, that, if a portion of that belongs back to EDD, we have to make sure that EDD gets back its share. <coughs> so we can't, I, I mean, it would be, it would not be in the parish's best interest to actually move the 70,000 to make the debt payment if that funding actually belongs back to another designated fund. But it could be that it belongs back to the fund that we're actually taking it out of to it, pay this bond. It could. Or the royalty. It could. At what point will be, we be able to determine that to where that money's just not sitting in an account dormant and can go where it needs to go? That's on my list of things to do. I actually had a conversation <laughs> with the auditors when they were here a couple weeks ago. Um, and, you know, he had indicated that that was discussed prior, that, you know, that that should have been cleared up and it hadn't been. So that, that's on my list. All right, thank you. Okay. Any other questions in regards to this resolution? Do we have to amend it? Uh, no, we, we're gonna sure. have to uh, amend it to take, oh, yeah. take the fund out of the general, the general fund, yes. Okay. Okay. An amount of? Three seven. Yeah, I don't have it. Because there's no figure. Uh, yeah, she didn't put it. Let me get the amount. Three seven. Three seven. How much? Okay. Three hundred seventy thousand five hundred. Okay, so this resolution is going to be amended to pay three hundred seventy thousand five hundred dollars out of the general fund to appropriate money for the bond payment for the Cajun RVR project. A motion to amend. Need a second. I second it. Mr. Olivier, roll call. Motions carries. Great. Thank. I'm just like, like one comment. Uh, that was in, uh, Oh wait, wait. Time out. Hold up. Somebody press Mr. J's button. No, he, he pressed it before he left. Okay. <laughs> 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 Roll call. He can't do it. No, no, no. Time out. 
This is getting a little bit frustrating. I've requested last meeting, do not press the vote button until I go for the roll call. It influences other people's votes, in my opinion. I'm asking out of courtesy from the chair, do not press the button before the roll call is asked, please. Can May I say something? Vote? I can say something? You can say something, Mr. Davis. We all get our packets before, so we know what we're going to vote on before we even that, come up. Uh, the chair is requesting. I don't requesting. see how you're going to influence somebody. I vote it already made up their mind. That, that's, that's your opinion. On. That's your opinion. You just said. Let's move, on, Let's move on, guys. Clear the board. Are we re-voting? Re -vote. Okay. <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you. <laughs> Back to... Summary number 351. Introduced by Lloyd Brown District 4. Resolution rescinding <coughs> resolution 2015-325, which is in a resolution amending resolution 2009-193-2011-10, which grants final approval to Paul Segura Memorial Industrial Park, phases one, two, respectively, in order to provide amendment to the dedicated right-of-ways. Note. This item will be renumbered upon adoption in order for the numbering sequence to be corrected in 2016. Move the table till June the 8th meeting. Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Brown to table till June 8th, Mr. Brown. Second. Second by Mr. Trahon. Roll call. And motion carries. Summary number 91, introduced by Eugene Olivier, Senior District 10. A resolution amending the fund budget to be determined during discussion in the amount of $5,000 to provide funding assistance for a floodplain management program to build support for the proposed reauthorization changes to the National Flood Insurance Program for 2016. All as requested by Beer Parish Hurricane Levy and Conservation District. Move. Moved by Mr. Olivier. Second. Second by Mr. Trahan. Discussion? Yeah. Mr. Olivier. I would like to actually uh, table this without setting a date on it because. Uh, I had a conversation with Ray and, and Larry. We don't have the really the funding to support this right now. And uh, we are, the flood insurance program is important to keep our flood insurance rates down. But we are <coughs> attacking this, this issue through the, through the uh, Police Yard Association as well as, well as national organization NACO. So it will be nice to have a third front attacking it, but right now we really don't have the funding, I feel, to, to address this particular issue. You requested a table. A table by Mr. Levy and a second by Mr. Brown. And, and if I can add one. Sure, thing. Mr. Reshore. Just for the record, I already wrote a letter <clears throat> and sent it to all of the congressmen, all our delegation. Um, so just so you know about it. What? Okay. M Mr. Gosser? So the the word is out. Why don't we, I mean, instead of just tabling with no date, just, exactly. just yeah, why, why don't we just delete it? I, 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 I'll bring it back at a later date, funding become available. Oh. There's still a chance we can find additional funding for it, but I don't want it coming out the general fund or the warranty fund, okay? All right. Mr. Richard, could, could we possibly get a copy of the letter so we can, if our constituents oh, yeah. ask that we can, we can just stand up for me. Thank you, appreciate it. Roll call. <laughs> 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 I want to the floor. <coughs> Summary number 105. A resolution ordering and calling a special election to be held in the parish of Iberia, state of Louisiana, to amend Iberia Parish Home Rule Charter, making applications to the State Bond Commission in connection therewithin and providing for other matters in connection therewithin. Move. This has to this Wait, move to delete, right? Move, move by Mr. Brown, second by Mr. Gosham. We need to uh, move to delete this item based on the failure of the council reduction summary in previous votes. Okay. Need a motion to delete, please? Move. Move by Mr. Landry. Second. Second by Mr. Levy to delete. Roll call. Right. And motion carries. Right. Summary number 106, introduced by the clerk of the council. A resolution appointing Mr. Casey Thibodeau, Tiberia Parish Sewer District Number 1 Board for the remainder of five-year terms <coughs> to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of Mr. Paul Landry, whose term expires August 28, 2018. <coughs> Move. Move. Second. Uh, Moved by Mr. Strong, <coughs> second by Mr. Macho. You've been asked. You've been asked. For the roll call, Mr. Landry, would you like to address the yes, he gave it yourself. Please. Okay. For the record, Mr. Landry will be recusing, recusing himself from this vote. Roll call. Abstaining and recusing. Oh, we got a vote. Didn't Okay, somebody, Mr. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, now you to vote early, now you don't vote at all? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for waiting. 
Okay, and motion carries. <laughs> Summary number 107, introduced by the clerk of the council, a resolution ratifying <coughs> the appointment of Mr. Perry Judis to the Iberia Parish Regional Planning Commission, representing the village of Lowerville for the remainder of the five-year term to fill the vacancy created by the expiration of term of Mr. Perry Judis, whose terms expired June 26, 2020. Motion. Mm -hmm. Moved by Mr. Dugas. Second. Second by Mr. Pollard. Roll call. <laughs> and motion carries. Resolution 108, a resolution <laughs> endorsing the application of Bayou Companies LLC for the Louisiana Enterprise Zone Program. Move. Moved by Mr. Olivier. Second. Second by Mr. Trahan. Question. Mr. Gashasan. Mr. Sheely, does this affect any way, any kind of way of on the Avalorm that we collect or inventory or anything? Is that still in there? Well, I mean, what are we, lo or what are we gaining from it? They're gaining. You're talking about 108? Yeah. Yeah. Historically, y'all have been excluding the uh, uh, economic development tax, the the uh, the one the one percent. <laughs> yes, but I mean, it, help me understand that they, they have to give us an incentive for it, actually, to benefit the parish for them to reap the bit. That's, that's correct. And sh normally, they I'm not sure if there's one attached here, but they normally fill out a form and it shows. Uh, it, yeah, it should be. So, and it normally shows how many, how much money is being spent, how many jobs are being created. Uh, I'm looking to see if that attachment is included. The, the form was in the package. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so, so it doesn't affect the Avalorum tax whatsoever. We're still going to collect that. It just everything's going to run day to day except for the one percent in the EDD district. Yeah, this is this is only sales tax. Okay. And, and and what they're doing is we're going to spend we're going to spend this money to expand our operations. We're going to have more employees, okay. and, and so you're approving they're getting a rebate of that sales tax, and, and you do it ahead of time because what happens is the, the school board who collects the tax is going to hold that tax and not distribute it to you. Because what you don't want to have is a distributor take it and somebody call you back and say, oh, by the way, we paid you X number of dollars in sales tax. We want it back. Right? So, so, they, so they hold it on, on your behalf. And uh, uh, Mr. Gustin, I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Mr. Chief. All right. Uh, you finished? Yeah, Any other questions on 108? Roll call, please. Motion carries. Summary 109, introduced by the Clerk of the Council. Resolution endorsing the application of Halliburton Energy Service Incorporated for Louisiana Enterprise Zone Program. Move. Move by Mr. Landry. Second, Second by Mr. Trial. Roll call. Motion carries. Need a motion to adjourn, please. Motion. Motion by Ms. Gustin. Second. Second by Ms. Broussard. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>